Hello and welcome to episode 87 of Beyond the Brick. I'm Joshua Hanlon. And I'm Matthew Kay. And this episode of Beyond the Brick is brought to you by Brickmania.com. And our featured kit of the week is the M3A2 half track. And if you're a fan of military uh, World War II models, this is a just a beautiful kit um, from Brickmania. And there's 393 pieces and printed building instructions that you get with it. So if you've never checked out Brickmania's kits, I'd highly encourage you to. They have some very detailed kits over there from not just World War II, but also Vietnam and modern era, all different military eras that you can check out. So that's brickmania.com, and I'll have a link to them in the description of this video so you can check them out. Definitely encourage you to do that. Now our guest this week is Thomas Lockwood. He is uh, 21 years old and a student at the University of Virginia. And so I really appreciate you coming on the show, Thomas. It's great to talk with you. Yeah, it's good to be here. And so you can just uh, start out by telling us a little bit about when you first started building, what kind of brought you first into bricks. Well, pretty sure I was four, and I think... We were moving from Michigan to Virginia, and my parents had to talk stuff that I don't even—I don't know what they were doing. That's I think. And I was told to go play quietly in the next door room. So they gave me—I don't know what set number it was, but it was some small yellow red car set. So they gave me that, and then I think that's the first Lego set I ever got. And then once we moved to Virginia, some family was selling off all their pieces in a yard sale. So I got two big buckets worth of that. And then it just grew from there. OK. How did you get into the online community then? Was there a certain site that you discovered first? Yeah, I don't remember how I specifically found it. I remember coming across. From Bricks to Bothans, I think was one of the first ones. Uh, Mini Big Customization Network was also one of the first sites I found. And uh, FBTB held a Arwing competition for the Star Wars theme. And I'm pretty competitive. I figured I would enter and it was actually a pretty awful model. I don't have any pictures of it because it was so long ago, but that's when I started. And uh, then I saw how bad I was compared to everyone else and showed me that there's a lot more to building than I thought there was. So that's how I got involved and eventually how I got a lot better. Okay, so the, kind of the, the contest brought you into the community there a little bit and helped you kickstart your building skills? Yeah, definitely definitely the contest. And it, it sort of still is. I have limited time right now, but I'll normally make time if there's an interesting contest, which uh, has been the case with the recent Pod Racer contest that FBTV has held. So I'll come home for a weekend, design the model with random colors, and then when I go back to school, I bricklink all the parts I need in the correct colors, ship them to my dorm room, and I'll assemble it and take pictures of it there, which I normally don't do, but uh, for special circumstances. Okay, so that's interesting that you build in your... Do you do a fair amount of building in your dorm room, or how much is it mostly if you just order special parts for a specific build? I I normally will have at least two or three CAD programs on my computer at any time, but I hate designing with them. <laughs> and it's because I have, to, I have to hold the part, you know? And especially because I build micro scale most of the time, half of my connections on any given model are quote unquote illegal. Which okay. 
is annoying to build with in a CAD program. But if I have the pieces or I go home for a weekend and I'll design something, I'll come back and when I have more time I'll get the parts sent to me. That's normally only when I the only time I do it now. Mm-hmm. So you actually are studying uh, so, uh, engineering, is that right, at the University of Virginia? Mm-hmm. Okay, so you mentioned you use those CAD programs and stuff. I'd imagine that kind of overlaps there with your studies and your Lego building a fair amount. Do you use some yeah, of the things you learned from that? It's. I'm pretty sure this is why I'm in engineering. So it's, it's the opposite way around, actually. So Lego is why I'm in engineering, not the reverse. Okay. That's really cool that that kind of brought you into that. So when you when you first started going to, to college, was that what you uh, you knew you enjoyed Lego building like that and saw the, the engineering aspects of it, and that's kind of what prompted you to go into that? It's exactly. I've, I haven't had a dark age, so when I started building at four, I'm 21 now, so I came into school definitely knowing what I wanted to do. And then mm -hmm. when I got involved with actual engineering projects like building a RC plane or a bridge or a stroller or something. It's sort of the same concepts, except instead of using plastic bricks, you have to use metal and stuff. Also, everything is a lot harder than when building with Lego, because Lego is perfect. <laughs> All the tolerances and everything fits the way it's supposed to and perfectly sized, and then when you get to the real world, nothing fits. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's just all these little extra challenges that make it that much harder for you? Yes, for instance, 3D printing. Everyone thinks it's so great. Everything messes up. If you start trying to print something you want it to be one inch, it's actually going to be 0.95, which is going to be a big enough difference that it ruins whatever it is you're trying to build. So, Lego doesn't have that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> great quality control over there, student. So you don't have to worry about that with Lego. No, no. So you've actually made it to, uh, is it Brick Fair, Virginia? Uh, I think like four years now have you been going there? I think it's four. Okay. So what has your experience has been like with that? Was there anything um, that stood out to you? as Because Matthew, let's see, you've been going there for at least four years, haven't you, if not more? Since the very beginning. Uh, like So 2008, I guess, that, what does that make it, like five years, something like that? Does that mean you started going in 2009, um, Thomas? I think it was... 9, 10... I think it was 2010. Oh, okay. When I started. All right, so the, the Dulles um, Expo Center location? Yeah, so I guess uh, it's three years. Three years, all right. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a fun little convention. I, I, I don't think I've, I've bumped into you, though, and that speaks to how large of a convention it is. <laughs> and it does. <laughs> Yeah, I've I've have heard it's quite large there from from people that have gone, but it, it still sounds like a lot of fun. So was was there anything throughout the years, Thomas, that stood out to you as some really cool or interesting thing you've been able to do there? I got to sit right next to the giant seven foot Serenity model, which was quite amazing. <laughs> and. Uh, Also, the I've never built a set with the whole blind speed build thing before. That was interesting. that was new. That is a lot of fun, isn't it? Where they had a game where you stick your hands in a box and you build the thing using instructions without being able to look at the parts. And so yeah, that never done that before. <laughs> so that was a new and interesting experience. Yeah, that's always cool to see people do. Um, it's definitely one of those challenges. It's not an easy thing <laughs> not when you can't see the parts and all of that. So, But I, it is a lot of fun as well. Also, I didn't realize so many people were still into Bionicle. <laughs> well, let's see. Brick Fair has the big kind of the Bionicle builders there, don't they? I think more than most of the other conventions. I think they do tend to congregate there, yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's... They have a very strong turn here. Okay. Yeah, that's what I thought. So it's uh what what is the, the bionicle log? Um Bionalog? 
Yeah, is it is it by analog? Yeah, I think. And that's then BZ it. Power is the yeah BZ also, Power. Okay, that's like the other one that has the big. Yeah. Okay, I think they they try to get a lot of members out there every year. Oh yeah. But now I think we'll talk about some of the uh, builds, Thomas, that you've maybe taken to some of these conventions over the years um, and some of your newer ones as well. The first one is uh, your F4 build, which I think is about your newest build, isn't it? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. So this is, like you said earlier, you do a lot of micro, which uh, is what this is, and... Is this one of them that you ran into trouble with trying to design on the computer, or did you do this all with the actual bricks? I wouldn't have been able to design this one on the computer. There's... I guess I could have. But for starters, the nose is... And you can tell from the picture, it's not fully attached. It just sort of hangs off. And yeah. That's how it curves. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's also the the tail, the way it's angled. I guess that's not so much an illegal connection, but it's not particularly sturdy. And I know that up in Eldraw or uh, LD. And, uh, but I've been trying to build a Phantom for quite a while. It's been on my to-build list. And between the nose and the tail, I was always getting stuck on how to do it. And I think what ended up happening was there was another contest. You all notice a trend here. <laughs> I built for, a, I think it was the micro military group on Flickr, or micro aircraft group. But it was a specific uh, contest to build airplanes in micro scale, okay. which I thought that was that was great. That was exactly what I needed because I have trouble competing with when I just build something and you enter a micro scale thing, which may be great, but it's not going to compare to something that's just a lot bigger. You can't compare the size. Definitely. So. I ended up building uh, around seven things for that contest, and one of them was a Harrier. And Harrier has somewhat of a similar tail design. And I didn't actually make a connection until recently, and when I realized that I could recycle the tail for the F4, and then I went home, played with the parts for a weekend, and figured everything out, the rest of it sort of came together. Okay. Yeah, and I think it turned out great in the end. A very, very nice model. It's, I, I always enjoy seeing great micro building, and this is a, a really good example of it. And like you said, the way you did the, the tail and the front of it and the different odd connections there that um, some might not consider legal, but uh, fa- fairly legal connections. <laughs> So I, I I think those are pretty neat, and it's also cool that, like you mentioned earlier, that the contests that kind of somewhat force you to do the different builds. I think that's that's really nice that there are those things in the community that encourage people to build like that. I would have done September, but I don't have the time right now. Maybe next <laughs> that's not a sit down and build a little micro model kind of contest. Yeah. <laughs> it's a very big micro model. <laughs> It, ha- it has been really neat, though, to see all of the, the models coming out of that. And I think, let's see, I guess that would have ended yesterday with the end of September. And so I don't know if there will be kind of a wrap-up or something like that. But I, I saw Simon, Simon Liu, mention something. It was around 40, I want to say, different builders that ended up entering that, which is really neat. So I, I, th- I thought that turned out great. But... Now, the next model I wanted to mention here was your, uh, I think this is one of your Avatar builds from the the movie, Mm -hmm. and uh, this is one of the airships um, from it, and uh, one of the choppers from Avatar, and I just thought this, some more micro-building here, of course, and I think you actually say this is one of your 
uh, favorite builds of all time. So what makes this stick out is just one of your favorites. Is it because it's based on the movie or more just the different pieces you used? That one took several weeks to actually finish. I had ended up pulling probably around 10 different reference websites and pictures to try and figure out what it looked like, first of all, because you don't actually get that clear look when you're just watching the movie. But it's got a lot of curves to it, a lot of weird angles, and it looked cool, but it was hard to get it to look right. So overall, it's my favorite because I'm glad it's finished and I don't have to build it anymore. <laughs> it was an absolute nightmare. It's still a nightmare. I think I've taken this to Brick Fair two or three times now. And every time I set it up, I have to basically rebuild the thing because if you look at it the wrong way, the rotors fall apart, the cockpit detaches. I think there's, there's I think, three different parts in the body where it's held on by a single stud which, again, is why I like micro, because when you get into a larger scale, you can't do that so much. Mm -hmm. But I was pleasantly surprised with, A, that I finished building it, and B, that it stayed together long enough to get a picture. <laughs> so this is just one of those really fragile builds, then, is kind of what it... And, yeah, you, you look at the... Uh, like the, the different clip connections there and that kind of thing, and then, the, like you said, there's the one stud connections throughout the body of it. Uh, it, it definitely looks kind of fragile <laughs> from uh, just looking at it, but it also is really neat the way you got all those connected, so I'm glad you could get pictures of it to show to people. <laughs> but now I wanted to uh, talk about... Uh, it's, Kind of along the same lines, um, not quite micro though, uh, a little bit bigger. And this is your uh, Firefly build, is that correct? Mm hmm. Okay, and this is the one that got on. Uh, you made like this is the, the one that got the votes on Kuso, correct? But then they turned it down as a set? Yeah, like two days later. Okay. <laughs> so that had a, a short lived history there with Kuso. Um, as cool as it was, they turned it down. Uh, I'm trying to... Did, what were the reasons for that? Did they give specific reasons? I'm trying to remember now. Did not match with their corporate... Values? Or values or something. Uh, yeah. Okay. Something okay. vague. Sounds about right. So what? what's some of the... If you just want to give us a little of the history behind that, how did you kind of decide to build this model and then uh, kind of its journey through Kuso, what, uh, how, how it succeeded in getting the votes? Well, the I saw the Serenity movie first before I saw Firefly. And that was uh, 2008, I think. And I love the ship, so I tried to build it. And I wanted to do something a bit bigger, but I ended up only building a really tiny model, which actually fits inside a jar. And that was, at that point, I think there were only two or three Firefly models on Flickr. OK. And so this is pre-Adrian Drake. Let's, uh, yes. Yeah? All yes. right. And just, so, if, real quick, if you don't know who Adrian Drake is, he's the one that built the... Uh, <laughs> just in case anyone out there does not, he's the guy that built the big... Uh, Who's heard like, of that, right? <laughs> I, I believe like the seven-foot um, uh, Serenity, the Firefly Serenity uh, build that you've probably seen on all different websites and throughout the Internet. It, it made a lot of news when it first came out. So that's who Adrian Drake is. Yeah, so this was this was before that. Uh, so I think they built the my really tiny one in around 2008, just because that was the only model I could actually build it that I liked, because, to be honest, the ship is ridiculous. I think the people that designed the vehicles in the show just hate Lego builders. <laughs> because there isn't 
an easy model to build the entire series. So I ended up just shrinking everything down from what I wanted to do originally because it was the only thing that I could get to look right. And the next year I went ahead and tried again and over the course of the summer I posted work in progress pictures and found some additional reference websites that I hadn't found before which helped a lot. And then in this, at the end of the summer of 2009 I think I finished it. The 2009 or 2010. And then ended up taking it to break fair that year. And then that was when Kuso went live, so I guess it had finished in 2010. I could just look it up, but <laughs> I don't actually remember. That's okay. And then whenever Kuso went live, I think it had been sitting around on my dresser for about a year at that point. And I had seen that people wanted or still liked Firefly-related merchandise. So the idea had been in my mind to make instructions for it or to make a, a more durable version because the Kuso model, kind of like the Avatar Chopper, is very fragile if you touch it in the wrong spot. So I was going to overhaul it and probably release the kit myself. But then Kuso came out and I figured, why not? Might as well give it a try. Wasn't actually sure they would go with it even if it got approved in the first place. But it didn't hurt to try it, so I put it on there uh, in March and it got to, I think, a thousand supporters in the first couple weeks. And then some people started using the Twitter and Facebook features built into the website and then started pestering the cast members until they relented and started talking about it. And <laughs> then it snowballed from there. So eventually, I think Gina Torres, not Gina Torres, um, Ethan Fillion, Adam Baldwin and Rena Becker and had all retweeted it. And I'm pretty sure it's because they just wanted everyone to stop tweeting them about it. But they ended up doing it and it ended up working. So it got the 10,000 in almost exactly a month. And then two days later they said no. So. Oh. That, so that so was, there was a. <laughs> went from really high to really low in about two days. Yeah, yeah, that's really too bad. I remember hearing about this and thinking yeah, it was pretty sad when they turned it down because this this really is a very cool build. You did a great job with it and it would have been awesome to see it in a in a kit or something. But I believe is it was it this kit or someone else's that they started selling separately that people could buy. Uh that's I ended up redesigning it anyways after Yeah. I was contacted through someone who was a car in the parts if someone had all the parts on one spot. And that's how that came about. And that's... It slowed down. But then the, the whole redesign took another summer, so I spent like a total of three summers working on fire, different Firefly models. So it's becoming quite an investment. i also really tired of this ship. <laughs> But. <laughs> yeah, and uh, you mentioned earlier but that... I do like to think that I've gotten a lot of trip. Okay, yeah, that, that is true. You definitely, I think, have probably gotten better throughout the building. And you mentioned earlier that uh, you had that one that fit in the 
the jar, and I thought that was kind of funny because it's, this is your firefly in a jar build, so it's like you captured a firefly and stuck it in a jar here, which I thought was pretty cool. <laughs> and you, you have the little yep. uh, green, is that like an LED light in the back? A little green light yep, on the yep. back, like a firefly. So I thought, I thought that was a nice touch there, a pretty cool idea. Yeah, so that was my first one. Very nice. And you even uh, you even have the holes. Is that holes in the top of the <laughs> jar to give it air so uh, so I the do. firefly won't die in there? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I just thought that was a neat little idea there. And so now I think that, that wraps it up for the firefly then. So are you still uh, selling the kits, or have those all sold out? I think the kits are sold out right now. I took my model with me to Freak Fair this past uh, August, and it made the trip back home, and then it got knocked over, and now it's in pieces. So I don't know what I'm going to do with that. I might offload it on somebody, or I might keep it. I'm not sure yet. I'll figure that out when I get mm -hmm. a chance away from school. But as of right now, I think all the kits are sold out. The instructions are still available, but the actual kits themselves aren't right now. Okay, and I'll make sure to put a link in the description to where you can find those. I don't. Know, do you have the website name, Thomas, where people can find those, or? Yeah, Edidine Industries. Okay. Yeah, and like I said, I'll make sure to throw a link in that so you don't have to figure out how to spell that and everything. <laughs> That'll save you the trouble. You can just look for the link in the description. And now the last build I wanted to mention here was uh, another one of your older builds, and uh, this picture is pretty small here, so uh, I'll make sure to put a link to the, in the description to this as well, so you can see see these pictures a little closer. But this is uh, Solomon's Temple from the Bible that uh, is a build you did. I think it was this in about 2008 that you built this. It's about that time, yeah. Okay, right around that time. So. Yeah, but year I did, or a year before I did the Firefly. So they were about okay. To... Yeah, I, I really enjoyed this build just because it's of a, like kind of a, a, a real-life thing, recreating it, and gives a good example so people can see what it actually looked like, which I, I always think is really cool when someone does that with Lego, takes something that you know might be hard for people to picture if you can read about it, but you can't actually... It's hard to see in your mind. And so then you did this in the with Lego, and it's all of a sudden comes to life for people. So... Did you uh, get input from people on, you know, the different ways it looked and things like that, or how did you go about kind of uh, researching this to make it um, as real as possible? Well, it's mentioned in Chronicle, Second Chronicles, and it's mentioned in First Kings, and so I bounced between those two references a lot. Between them, they have descriptions of just about everything. For certain areas, it's just very vague. Like, it'll say the, the main altar is 30 feet by 30 feet by 15 feet, and that's all it says. It doesn't say anything about stairs or ramps or how many steps it had. So at that point, it becomes trying to figure out what would be practical or artistic license, if you want to call it that. So at that point, I would consult my pastor or I would look to other people's artistic interpretations and at that point they can't really say that I'm wrong but besides the fact that you have the basic dimensions you can't really say it's right either mm -hmm. which was probably for me the most frustrating part because I'm a bit of a perfectionist so <laughs> not knowing what to do was uh, a bit difficult, but for other parts it was uh, pretty straightforward. And I had to build a cow, which was one of the weirdest experiences I've had since I really never built anything besides vehicles. But the the bronze sea, or the has a, a bunch of uh, bronze oxen that sits on top of, and there's twelve of them. And Lego at that point didn't make a uh, cow. This was quite a ways before that. Or it was 
the year that they started to come out or something like that. They were they were pretty close. So I had to start staring at pictures of cows, <laughs> which I had never done before. That was that was an experience. And after three days of looking at other people's cow models and pictures of cows, I finally had something that I thought I could work with. Hmm. Yeah, and the the so cow, twelve of them. Yeah, the the cows in this photo are in the uh, the bottom left there with the the water, and so the, if if you're uh, just wondering where where it is it's exactly in the photo that he's talking about, so yeah, those turned out really great. The the brick built cows, I thought you did an excellent job with those, and uh, just the the Thank detail you. you were able to put in with those was really nice. And uh, speaking actually, of detail, yeah. go ahead. What were you going to say? There's actually a blog that I made for this. It has probably some closer and clearer pictures than just that Flickr. I think I only had two or three. That's when Flickr had their 200 photo limit, and because I was cheap, I never went and bought the, <laughs> the pro version. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I had a blog called Assembling Solomon's Temple, and that has work-in-progress pictures for about a year. Okay. I'll make, sure, I'll make sure to add a link to that in the description, because like I said, yeah, these photos are a bit small. But uh, you, you can, if you want to, they'll have a link there, so that'll be easy to check them out, and you can look at some more of them. But here's, is this the, this is the inside of the temple, this photo here, correct? Yeah, all the pictures are not there. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, and this is another really detailed part. I love yeah. that you, you did this with... No, I'm open that. The yellow and everything, I think, turned out really nice. And then that rug isn't actually... Is that like a... That's a real rug in the back there that I'm assuming you had someone hold up or something when you took the photo? It, it is a real rug. It's... It's actually held on by hooks, which there's other pictures on the blog that show how it's held on. Okay. But it, I guess I could have done it in but I figured it would look better if I used an actual uh, fabric. Yeah, it kind of gives it a more realistic look, but I, I think this is really cool. And I know that you see all the yellow on the inside here, and then the outside was really white. So was this... Uh, like pick a brick, or how did you go about getting all these, you know, certain pieces in one color like that? That was all BrickLink. Okay, BrickLink. So, mm-hmm. And I don't remember what stores I used, but it was a lot, <laughs> and I got no no external funding from this. This was back again around 2008 or 2010 or so. So. I was not really employed, so I had to make do with selling uh, Star Wars minifigs and stuff on eBay, and then I would turn around and use that money to buy parts for the Solomon's Temple project. And that's really why the Solomon's Temple ended up taking about a year, is because I just had to get money so I could turn around and buy more parts. Which wasn't so bad because Star Wars was a lot more popular because Revenge of the Sith had fairly recently come out and Lego wasn't producing all the extra Jedi characters that they are now. So you you were able to take advantage of that and make a little money on the side? (laughs) Uh, The the stuff that I didn't spend, which was most of it. You're at least able to turn around and buy some more Lego with it, so that's exactly. good. Exactly. That never hurts. Nope. Well, I think that's all the builds then. I appreciate you telling us a little more about that, and I think we'll uh, finish out the interview here with um, what plans do you have for the future as far as builds or any conventions you think you'll be able to make it to? Anything you can commit to right now? Conventions, it depends on if I get a job next year. 
post graduation? <laughs> Where what state that job is in, and if that's close to a convention. <laughs> if I end up staying in Virginia, then I I'm sure I'll try and make it out to Brick Fair again. But I honestly have no clue at this point. So it's more like Thomas Lockwood coming to an area near you. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Contact employers. Give give me a good word. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, right um. And uh, things coming. Uh, I built the F4, and I actually have another one built in the... Uh, Thunderbirds paint scheme, which I'm actually uh, doing the editing for the pictures of that when I actually have the time. And so that will hopefully be uploaded in the next week or two. Okay, so yeah, pe people can look forward to that on their your Flickr stream then? Mm-hmm. And other than that, I don't have anything immediate or in the works. But I do have my eyes on finally building a ship, which I haven't done yet. The Serenity comes in at about 70 studs, so it's just a bit too short. Mm -hmm. The natural option would be to build a fourth Serenity model and actually make a ship this time, but I'm not going to do that. <laughs> you're, you're, you're a bit tired of it now, so you want to yeah. move on to something else. Something new. At plus, when there's a 7-foot model... A ship's ready is kind of not as impressive anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so right yeah. now I'm looking at either the Bebop or the Betty from Alien 4. So. Okay. So that'd be some interesting builds there. Some cool stuff to look forward to as well. On to better and not necessarily bigger things. Exactly. <laughs> Well, that's really cool, and I appreciate you you telling us about uh, your different builds there and what you have planned for the future. It was great talking with you, Thomas. Yeah, it was great to do this. Yeah, no problem. And uh, like I mentioned earlier, I'll have links to all of Thomas's builds and everything we talked about along with the instructions for the uh, Firefly in the description of the video, so you can see all that easily. Just follow the links and get some more photos of everything we talked about there, and Definitely, if you don't follow him on Flickr, add him as a contact and keep up to date with all of his builds. He's got some really cool stuff there. And if you want to follow everything we're doing here at Beyond the Brick, you can just subscribe to the YouTube page. It's free and easy for you, and it's a great way to keep up to date with all the videos we release and everything like that. You get the new episodes once a week, or you can subscribe to our email update at emailupdate.brickpodcast.com and receive an email once a week with the new episodes of the show. So if you'd rather get an email form, you don't have to mess with YouTube then. So that's all we have for you tonight. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next week. <laughs>